Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Hangout with the Shopping Block. Today we have Chef Jeff Adamek at our, our Merchandise Mart location. He's going to be teaching us how to make homemade chicken stock. And we have Mike Lintel with us. He's with our events department as, and is an avid home cook. So Jeff, along with some questions so that you guys feel comfortable after this 30-minute broadcast in making your own stock. And it couldn't come in a better time today considering the weather outside. Um, <laughs> it's nice to have a nice big pot of simmering stock on the stovetop to keep you warm. I'd like to invite all of you to post your questions um, to the Google Plus stream and Jeff will answer them during the broadcast. You can expect to be with us for about 30 minutes today. And um, as most chefs will tell you, a good quality stock is the basis for any good soup or sauce. Right, Jeff? You are absolutely right, Andrea. What kind of stock is your favorite to make, Jeff? Veggie, chicken, um, beef? You no, know, it totally depends on what you're cooking. Uh, first and foremost, uh, meat stocks are really good for you. Stocks that come from bones of animals uh, really nourish your body. So that's uh, the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to go over a, a chicken stock. Um, are we all set and ready to go? We are. Awesome. Okay. So uh, with chicken stock, everybody, and that's going to be, again, uh, the first thing that we're going to do, stocks are one of those things that are very, very, very important to cooking. Uh, not only just to cooking, but to making really good food. Um, when you are cooking, you want to be able to have something taste really well. Now, water is very benign. It has no flavor at all. And yes, you could use water for making risotto or starting a soup um, and putting a whole chicken in it. You know, just like mom has made chicken uh, soup for you when you're not feeling well. Uh, but when you can start out with a stock to make something, uh, it just makes your dish that much better. Mm. Um, chicken stock, vegetable stock, uh, veal stock, rabbit stock, any type of a stock, any animal you have, you can make any stock out of. Uh, most vegetables um, you can use for making vegetable stock, uh, but there are a couple ingredients that are pretty important in regards to building really good flavors in a stock. Uh, and that first um, terminology is called mirepoix. Mirepoix is the French terminology for carrot, celery, and onion. Uh, if you go down south and you have uh, some Creole food or some food in Louisiana, they have their Holy Trinity, uh, which is the south version of mirepoix, and they substitute green peppers for carrots. Uh, carrots and green peppers adding sweetness. Celery adding savoriness, uh, and onion adding a little bit of acidity and sweetness as well to cook. If anyone knows, if you eat a raw onion, it tastes acidic and it's a little bit bitter in the mouth. Uh, but if you take it, you cook it down and caramelize it and really pull all the natural sugars out of carrots, they really sweeten up a lot. Uh, you think you add sugar uh, by tasting one, but it's not. There are a lot of natural sugars in onions. So carrots and celery and onions are the three main ingredients uh, to help make a really good stock. Uh, also, too, stock does not have to be complicated. You do not have to have carrots and celery and onions and I have fresh herbs over here like bay leaves and thyme and parsley, which are my favorite for making stock. I have some spices like coriander, fennel, cloves, black peppercorns. Uh, but what it really comes down to is if you go to the store and you buy a whole roasted chicken, you go home and you pull off all the meat from that roasted chicken or rotisserie chicken, what you're left is with the carcass. Uh, a lot of people throw that away. But simply, if you were to take that cooked carcass, put it in a pot, Cover it with water, bring it up to a boil. Once it boils, just let it simmer away for it's already a cooked uh, carpet. So one hour, uh, you have a stock that is flavored like that chicken. And now that will help you make any dish that you are cooking, any soup, any stew, any sauce, um, a whole lot better. So that's uh, that's pretty much how we're going to go over this today. If we have a little bit of time, I roast off some veal bones and some mirepoix with tomato paste and, uh, to make a veal stock. Um, but we'll, we'll see if we get that. <laughs> All right, so in regards to stocks, everybody, uh, one thing you want to keep in mind is how long does it take to cook a stock? That is the one thing you want to pull out the most flavor out of whatever you're cooking. For instance, if you're cooking a vegetable stock or a fish stock, 
fish bones are really soft and small. Uh, vegetables cook really fast. So in regards to making a fish stock or a, or a vegetable stock, it's going to take about an hour to an hour and a half, and that's it. Your vegetables will be soft. You will have extracted all the flavor of it into your um, water, which is now a vegetable stock or fish stock. Um, and if you cook any longer, you actually can deteriorate a little bit of the flavor that you'll have. Um, muck everything together. Uh, so about an hour to an hour and a half is a good time on a vegetable or fish stock. If you're doing chicken stock, and chicken bones being a little bit bigger and a little bit thicker, uh, for instance, this is the backbone of a chicken that we're using. If you can put it up to my hand, it's almost the width of my hand. Chicken stock takes about five hours to pull all of the um, nutrients and vitamins and, and calcium out of the bones and the marrow out of the inside uh, to really get good flavor. So chicken stock takes five hours. Now veal stock, which bones are a lot bigger, these, are, these bones are actually on the smaller side. These are the knuckle bones from veal, um, which are great because they have a lot of natural cartilage in there, which makes meat jelly, and that's, that's what's really good for your body. Uh, but these take 12 hours to extract all of the um, flavor out of veal bone. Uh, you take a look at this is one bone from the leg, and this is the whole back bone. You can see that the veal bones are a whole lot wider than the chicken bone. So 12 hours on that. And actually with veal bones, We'll do a second turn, a second day to make another stock uh, because you really can pull a lot of flavor out of these. Uh, a lot of times when I make veal stock, I'll do it for two days. Um, 24 hours for the first one, bring everything out in 24 hours for the second stock. Okay. So, uh, in regards to making stock, and in regards to those ingredients only taking one hour for vegetable and fish, five hours for chicken, 12 to 24 to 48 hours for veal bones, you need to cut your vegetables accordingly in the right size so that you can extract those flavors properly. Uh, for instance, if I'm doing a vegetable stock, uh, I'm going to take my carrots, and I'll put that down so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to take my carrots, and I'm probably going to cut them in about half to three-quarter inch slices. Okay? If I'm doing chicken stock, that's going to go five hours, I'm probably going to carry one inch thick, so you can see the difference on that. And if I'm doing something like a veal stock that's going to take 24 hours, you can see the difference in this roasted uh, carrot I have versus this is for a vegetable stock, this is for a veal stock. Because after 24 hours, this big piece of carrot will finally be soft, all the nutrients will be pulled out of it, whereas if you were to use this for a veal stock, this is going to be cooked in about an hour, and then you're just adding bad flavor to your Stock, locking it down, it turns, it pretty much disintegrates into your stock. It makes it cloudy. Um, so you really want to make sure that you cut the vegetables to the right size uh, to what bones you are using for stock. Okay. Again, about um, half an inch to three quarters of an inch for fish or vegetable stock. One inch for chicken stock and two uh, inches for veal stock. So that takes a couple days. Uh, then you want to figure out what flavorings you want to add to your stock. Uh, again, the base is carrot, celery, and onions, um, garlic if you would like. Uh, but if, again, if you're cooking Mexican food, maybe you want to put, if you're going to do uh, fajitas, if you want some stock, or you're going to make some uh, pozole, uh, maybe you want to add some cumin to your stock. Uh, if I'm cooking uh, Italian risotto uh, with some shaved fennel and fish on top, uh, you can add fennel seeds to your stock. So you can flavor your stock and kind of coax it into whatever direction you want to based upon what you're cooking. Uh, but the first thing you want to do when you're making a stock is you want to take your bones, um, rinse them off. You want to make sure you have any excess uh, you know, blood running out of them that's uh, all nice and clear. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your bones that you have uh, washed off, you're going to put them into your pot, and then you're just going to cover it with water plus a bubble. So for instance there, I have, I have about five pounds of chicken backs and necks, um, and I'm probably going to cover, cover my uh, chicken bones with water, and then I'm probably going to go another four to five inches. Uh, I'll, I'll be adding in some vegetables as well. Uh, once you get your cold water, you don't want to start with hot water. Start with, with hot water, you start to pull some of the fat, uh, some of the uh, meat proteins out of the... Uh, out of the chicken bones too soon. So you want to start with cold water, 
slowly let it come up to a boil. Uh, once it comes up to a boil, you'll start to see on top some scum. You'll start to see some foam. Uh, you don't want that in your stock. First off, it'll make it cloudy and kind of give it a bitter taste. So what you want to do is once you, uh, your chicken bones in your water comes up to a boil, uh, drop it down to a simmer. You just want the kind of a whoop, whoop, little bubbles going. You don't want it to be rapid, rapidly boiling. If your stock is rapidly boiling in your chicken bone, what will happen is, is all of the uh, fats that are uh, being extracted, all of the meat proteins, just keep circulating in your stock. And that's what causes it to be cloudy. And uh, if you ever had a good chicken noodle soup, you notice you have a clear broth. So in order to get that clear broth, after it comes up to a boil, you drop it down to that low simmer so it's just slowly, slowly bubbling um, uh, throughout the process. Uh, once your water has come to a boil and you have skimmed it, then you can go ahead and add your vegetables. Uh, and again, I'm going to start off with my carrots, celery, and onions. Uh, I'm going to cut these about a half inch thick, bring that up to a boil. Uh, after you add your vegetables, everybody, uh, that's when you uh, can really uh, start your timer and let it go. So again, we're going to go for about five hours with our chicken stock. Uh, there's really not a lot I can uh, show you uh, in regards to that because, again, it takes five hours. We're doing 30 minutes. Uh, we're doing a 30-minute demo here, so I'm just going to set my vegetables aside, um, you know, and then also, too, in regards to when you're adding your vegetables, okay, so you added your vegetables, your stock has been going, I usually won't let my stock go about halfway through the process uh, before I add fresh herbs. Uh, when it comes to adding those fresh herbs, uh, if you uh, don't know, when you're working with dried herbs versus fresh herbs, you just want to put in dried herbs. Permeates the broth or whatever you're cooking with those dried herbs, uh, they soften up and are edible, uh, even though you're going to strain the But fresh herbs, uh, if you put those in right away, you're going to cook the good flavor out of them in about an hour, and then again, you're going to start to mute those flavors because they've been in there so long. So I'll wait a while, about halfway through the process, before I add those fresh herbs. Okay? Uh, but once you get that going, you, you just want to keep skimming it. Uh, for instance, if you have a, a ladle, uh, you can slowly skim around the top part. And I wanted to, uh, I got to stop going already um, just to kind of show you this. And I know you, you can't really see that. I got a little bit of spillage action there. But um, what you're going to see on the top of your stock is you're going to start to see beads of fat, or what I like to call the eyes of the stock. Um, and your fat will rise to the top, uh, and your nice stock will be underneath that. So what you want to do is slowly skim off that fat throughout the process of making your stock uh, so it keeps it nice and clear while it's slowly simmering uh, throughout the duration of your stock making. And then a uh, couple things in regards to when you're cooking your stock and you're skimming your stock, a couple tricks that we use in professional kitchens that you might not realize at home but if you were to put a stock pot directly on top of the burner, uh, that heat coming up the center, your fat will go to the outside edges of the stock. So you're going to skim around the outside. you got to skim around the whole thing when it's directly on the center of the burner. But if you actually take your stock pot and you take it off of the burner a little bit, so for instance over here I'm directly on the burner, but if you see I moved it off the burner so the actual direct heat would be right here. Then all the, the heat is going to be here. All your fat is going to go to that side of the pot. It's a lot easier to skim all the fat off of one side versus having to skim all the way around. So uh, try that trick when you are making stock. Put it off the edge of the burner just a little bit so all that fat goes off to one side. Uh, also, too, one thing you want to watch out for when you're using a ladle to skim that fat off is you don't want to pull up the good broth underneath there. So you just very, very... Very, very close to the top is what you want to skim for. But I also have another trick uh, that a good friend of mine, uh, when I was working uh, back in a professional kitchen, uh, taught me. And uh, it's, a, it's a trick that I almost tell all of my students anytime when you're using a good broth in a class. You just take a paper towel, uh, just a regular, you know, this is a simple towel that we use after we wash our hands. Or if we have a roll of paper towels, 
uh, and you really can't see that much uh, because you can't see into the stock right here. But if you take your paper towel and you set it on that fat, and you pull up, the paper towel will catch all of the fat that was on there without extracting a lot of the broth from underneath there. Uh, paper towels being compostable, uh, you can compost it. Uh, it'll turn back into nice fertile soil, so it's not like you're causing a lot of garbage. Uh, you know, uh, rule of thumb of composting is living is compostable. I try to compost as much as possible, as you all should. Uh, so that's one other way of trying to skim your stock without losing uh, a lot of your broth. Okay. All right. So now let's uh, fast forward. Let's fast forward to five hours from now, which I have this stock that I previously made. Okay. I wanted to show you a couple things in regards to it. Um, straining your stock. If you want to be able to pull off all of those vegetables, all of that, uh, all those bones out of there, and what I usually use first is I will go into my pot uh, with the utensil like this. This is called a spider. Uh, usually if you're deep frying something, this is used for pulling stuff out of a deep fryer. Uh, it's got just a wire uh, mesh inside of here, so without pulling your broth out, you're going to pull off all the big bones. Okay. Uh, after five hours, you've extracted all the flavor out of the bone. Any meat that is on your chicken is going to be falling apart, uh, not in a good way. If you wanted to use the whole chicken, you know, you're going to cook your chicken for an hour, hour and a half, and pull that out, then your chicken meat is good to use. But after five hours, you're not going to want to eat that meat without no flavor in it. Uh, you've extracted all of the flavor into your broth, so you're not going to want to eat that. You're going to want to get rid of that. Uh, once you've gotten rid of all of those big items, the big uh, vegetables, the bones, uh, out of your pot, then you're going to switch to uh, uh, one of two other one of two other uh, utensils for straining your stock, and that is either a china cap or a chinois. And this is a chinois. The holes are a lot smaller. Uh, it's also called a fine mesh seed. Uh, if you don't have access to one of these. Uh, th this will be just fine. The only difference is, is that you're going to have some particles left in your broth. And, and in my background, coming from 13 years of uh, professional cooking, uh, if anyone has ever uh, read the book by Thomas Keller, the French Laundry Cookbook, uh, he states in there, and he's a great, great, one of the best chefs in America, uh, classic. Uh, he states in there, anytime you transfer a liquid from one vessel to another, uh, at any point in time, you always want to strain it. Uh, if anything falls in there, or you might have some coagulation of fats on top, or or anything, it's always nice to strain and stop. You ever go to a restaurant uh, and you want really good food, you want it to look good. So uh, same thing at home. You want you want to apply that practice. And Northwestern Cutlery here in Chicago uh, can sell you these. They're about forty forty five dollars. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is I have some clear vessels, and I want to show you the difference when you strain a stock. Uh, for instance. Here is a stock, the stock that I previously strained, okay, and it, you can really see in here, uh, it looks good, but there is definitely, you can see some stuff, especially in that top left corner, some stuff's floating around in there, okay, uh, and that's a nice looking broth already, and uh, one thing also too to keep in mind is that you don't want to take off all the fat. Uh, it's nice to have those beads of uh, little beads of fat on the top, and that's flavor as well. Okay, uh, but when you're straining this, you just want to take this and, and very carefully, no matter what vessel you're putting it into, it might be a little bit dangerous to put this into this glass um, <laughs> glass container here. But you just want to be careful, and you want to just nicely uh, let it go through there. Uh, sometimes too, people take ladles, and whatever's left in the strainer, they'll push it through. But if you push it through, you're actually going to be pushing cooked vegetables or anything that is actually in there through those little holes into your stock. Don't do that. That's going to make your stock cloudy again because, yes, you will have those fine little particles again. So just let the liquid slowly go through that stock. Uh, what you're going to have to do then, if you have some stuff that is left in here, uh, just go over the garbage and just uh, tap it upside down, maybe rinse it out so that you can go through the next batch. Uh, once you get your stock uh, simmer, or sorry, um, strained out, uh, and that's just a little bit. <laughs> we, we, there's a lot more in here, but once you get that stock strained out, you want to cool it down. Uh, what I like to do is uh, I like to cool it down as fast as possible. The longer you set it out at room temperature, uh, you know it slowly deteriorates, and the sooner you cool it down, 
um, you're going to lock in those good flavors. So I like to put it in an ice bath. Uh, for instance, what I'll do is I'll take a, a large bowl or else a bigger pot, uh, and I'll take my strain stock and I'll set it directly in that ice bath, maybe put a little bit of water with my ice, uh, and that glass on ice or even metal on ice will cool this down really fast. If you're putting your stock into a plastic container, plastic is not as good of a, a conductor as glass or metal, it's going to take longer to cool down, but you will cool it down nice and fast. And then uh, once you cool it down, you know, then we come to storage. And uh, if you are making a super stew, you're going to be able to use all of your stock right away. Uh, but if you are not uh, going to use all your stock right away, and let's say, for instance, you want to use your stock to make a sauce, uh, you're not going to need all of the stock you made at one time. You're just going to need a little bit. One thing that I really like to do at home when I'm making stock is uh, I'll make up words to three gallons, four gallons at a time which I'm not going to use all that now, all at once. So I'll take one quart Ziploc bags, and I will pour that stock, that nice strain stock, into that Ziploc bag, and I will cinch the corner to where there's no more air in the bag. Get all of the air out of there, seal it tight, and then put it on a sheet tray or whatever vessel you can, put it into your freezer flat, and freeze it. If you do that with four, five, six, however many quart Ziploc bags, once they're frozen, then you can stack them up and just pull out a quart of stock as you need it. Uh, some people like to freeze them in ice cube trays. Uh, in ice cube trays, it's a lot smaller of a uh, uh, vessel, uh, but if you only need a little bit, well, that's fine as well. Once your ice cube tray is frozen with the stock, you can crack it open, put those in a Ziploc bag, and then just throw that in the freezer and then pull out those cubes uh, anytime you want. Uh, but again, uh, when you're making, uh, you know, when you're when you're cooking and you have access or time, uh, stock is one of those things that will really, really take your cooking to the next level. Uh, I highly recommend you to try it at home. Uh, again, even if it's just putting water over a roasted chicken carcass, uh, or if you do go through the fine processes of cooking your uh, stock halfway, adding in fresh herbs and spices and uh, your, your stock can be simple and your stock could be complex. It's completely up to uh, your time and availability to, uh, to your schedule of work. Great. Thanks so much, Jeff. That was full of great tips. Um, I know um, Tom, who was watching with us, said he was going to try the paper towel trick, and I, for one, had never heard moving the stock pot off to the side of the burner, so I'm going to try that one. So. Good. Uh, do we, Everybody uh, who's stuck with us through our technical issues, um, again, we we are with the Chopping Block, Chicago's largest recreational cooking school. Uh, we offer cooking classes, private uh, events, as well as retail at our two locations in Chicago. Um, if you're not in Chicago, you can connect with us here on Google+. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. And we do these hangouts once a month, so if you have ideas of techniques that you would like our chefs to demonstrate for you, just post it to um, any of those venues. We will we will check it out. Um, so then, thank you so much for joining us. You can always reach us at thechoppingblock.net. And until next time, um, I'm Andrea Miller, and for Chef Jeff, thanks for joining us.